I'm back with Dossier's ongoing coverage of I Am Cologne 2023, and I'm here with Regali coming off of OG's uh, overtime loss to nine. So I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, when we last talked at Dallas, you mentioned the fact that you're gonna, you know, you were only a stand at that time. Um, how soon after Dallas did you know you were gonna be offered a permanent spot on OG? Uh, when the player break started and when every every org wanted to change something, so I don't remember actually when, but I know it was vacation. Yeah. And did it feel like a good sort of vote of confidence from OG, despite you know having such a limited time with them, that they were like, okay, this person needs to be one of our star players and is part of our massive rebuild? Was that a good you know uh, vote of confidence from the organization? Yeah, I mean, it was nice. It felt nice. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, unfortunately, despite all you know all these changes at OG, they have yet to find a have yet to found a win in the second half of 2023. Do you think the team is still in a growth phase, or what's what do you contribute to the fact that you've been suffering all these close losses recently? Uh, we didn't really practice. I mean, we practiced in, at Blast, for example. That was our bootcamp as well, so we didn't practice before that. And it's pretty hard now in the beginning that everyone has a lot of ideas and we have to practice so many maps. I mean. We don't really have a big map pool either. It's pretty hard, but we are trying our best. Like officials are good because we can learn from them more than we do in prex. So we are at least grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And you know, now in this new iteration of OG, you're working with Nexa. One, uh, you're working with Nexa as opposed to Nico from the old OG. Uh, how do those two IGLs compare? How have you been sort of adapting under Nexa style? Uh, I'm still trying to adapt uh, not only under his style, but for example, Kitos as well, because he's talking maybe as much as him. They are uh, great players with a lot of experience. So um, to answer your question, I feel like Nexa is more on the fly and he's adapting his calls on whatever the others are saying and doing, where Nico was like, hey, we're going to end up like this and probably we're doing this threat. So be careful, don't die. That was all. Uh, and with that in mind too, you know, Nexa has returned from this lengthy hiatus that started at the relatively start of the year. Um, do you feel he's back? Do you feel that he's back up to 100 percent? And how does he feel his uh, return to competitive play has been? Uh, I don't think he's feeling like he's fully back, and I didn't watch him either, like before that. So I don't know how good he was, but he, I know for a fact that he's grinding a lot uh, in terms of maybe like that match. He's also trying to learn the new metas as well. Um, alongside the coach and the, the analyst, like he's trying to give us the best IGL he can be. Mm -hmm. And uh, another interesting situation that's sort of arisen with this new look OG, uh, there were some reports before the roster was announced that Ruga may be moving to a different position in the organization. Uh, can you sort of clarify if he's going to be, what's it like, you know, is he going to be the head coach moving forward or is this just like his sort of twilight days before cha more changes are coming to the coaching staff? Uh, I didn't even know about the rumors, so I suppose he will always be the coach. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, Ruga's, so Ruga's here to stay, basically? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, as we touched on at the beginning of this interview, um, OG was unable to, you know, find their first one of this new season. Um, there's been a lot of sort of negative community reaction to uh, this sort of new OG roster. But I wanted to, you know, so I wanted to ask you, as we head into the best of threes, do you guys think you still have more to show here at Cologne? As long as we play one of the maps that we're practicing more than the others, then yeah, for sure. But it's really hard, like, to get the first two in and then everything will uh, come with the flow. Uh, we also saw in an interview with Nexa, I believe, for um, Dust for Dust US or HLTV, if I'm not mistaken, about how uh, Nexa said you were sort of positioned to be one of the stars on this roster. Uh, you've had a very quick rise up through the uh, you know through the international scene, only you know going from Copenhagen Flames to this new OG roster. Um, is that some added pressure for you to have to be one of the star players on this roster? Um, no, because I feel like in every lineup I've been, I had to be the star player and find the. Um, aggressive player that uh, I should be in the systems who we are all playing uh, but it's really hard now because it's in my mind mostly that I don't really have the tier one experience but it's not only about that it's just if I would play like I usually play then everything will be easier but I just need to practice my moves and stuff like that but as I said we didn't really have time to practice we really need time to practice and you know, sort of looking towards this roster and its final form, uh, if you're positioned as one of the stars, who do you see sort of in the team as sort of being the second star in the squad? I don't really know. Um, Fasher, it can be Fiku, but I, I feel like Fasher is based on his roles. But I don't know, like Fiku can shoot better one day than 
<laughs> fashion, so I don't really know. But yeah, I suppose Dion or fashion. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for your time, and we're pulling for you guys in your next match. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.